So I had a few questions. Um, one I wanted to ask about is kind of indecisiveness or second guessing or kind of regret. Patterns that still come up for me, especially with sometimes big decisions, sometimes little decisions. Talked a lot about that just before mm. you. Yeah. Perfect basis of this. Yeah. Yeah, and it seems like there's something in it or I wouldn't keep kind of going there, but it's not obviously coming from the source me. And it seems like maybe it's something about keeping my options open. Well, what if it's just law of attraction giving you more of what you've been thinking about? Yeah. <laughs> we don't think that there is any advantage to trying to justify why you're not in the receiving mode. There always is something to gain from sifting through contrast. But once you have accomplished a vortex as rich and ripe as yours, then getting into the receiving mode is the most natural and obvious thing to be doing. And so there really is no point in trying to explain yeah. why you might be getting inspiration or motivation from not being in the receiving mode mm -hmm. when the real question is, why am I not in the receiving mode? And the real answer is because it hasn't become important enough to me mm -hmm. to make it a priority or because law of attraction has enough momentum going that I'm just dealing with the momentum that's already going. Yeah, one thing that was interesting, like I was considering a, an, another job that would have some positive aspects of working from home and flexibility. Anyhow, what I noticed during the like three weeks I was interviewing, thinking about this, is I would kind of go the one direction of my mind for a while and feel it out, look at the positive aspects, get momentum, and I'd like be there. I'm like, oh, I'd take it for sure. And then I would shift a little bit and say, well, okay, what about what I'm doing now? And, and all of a sudden I'd feel like, oh, I'm loving where I am. And <laughs> so I, it would confuse me in a sense, but I felt like I was kind of feeling both of them out to listen for inner guidance, but it felt like I could almost align to both. Well, what I ended up doing was I got to a place of not being sure, but feeling like, I remember you say, if it doesn't feel like a hell yes, it's a hell no. So I stay where I'm at. <laughs> but I mean, it was very an interesting process to work through that. Well, we're pleased that you inserted that phrase into the conversation because we were about to do that. I remember. <laughs> so let's just sort this out. You presented a very clear dilemma and your opening words are indecisiveness. And we want to help you realize that when you are really in the receiving mode, the feeling is one of decisiveness. So anytime you feel indecisive, just know you're not in the receiving mode. Mm -hmm. Because when you're not in the receiving mode, you see, here's the thing. You're really going to like this. You are smart. And your rational mind does have the ability to weigh the pros and the cons and the pluses and the minuses. You can do that. And you could stack up benefits and detriments. And you could come to a sort of human decision that others could look at the same criteria and agree with you that you've made a good choice. That's not the receiving mode. Yeah. The receiving mode is asking your inner being who is in your vortex and who knows everything yeah. that you've put into it. So while more money might be important to you and more freedom and flexibility, more expansion might be in there. And so you might rationally choose something that would satisfy this and this and this, well, your inner being is helping you choose something that satisfies this and 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 this. And so the receiving mode and the rational minded mode are not the same thing. And we are really fine tuning here, aren't we? Isn't it a nice thing to realize that you can get in the receiving mode where you can have broader perspective feeding you your inclination? But here's the bigger factor. Oh, you're really going to like this. This is the most important reason for you to consciously, personally, physically, vibrationally align with the receiving mode. Think about law of attraction and how law of attraction responds to a vibrational signal. And now in your own mind, compare the vibrational signal that you are likely offering from your human conscious mind and the vibrational signal that your inner being is offering. Just comparatively, which of those signals do you think is broadcasting with the most energy that creates worlds? <laughs> we may have given it away. Yeah. Think about law of attraction's response. Yeah. So do you want law of attraction responding to your conscious mind? Or do you want law of attraction responding to your conscious mind 
in concert with source energy's mind about what matters to you did we make that point clear and so that receiving mode and that point of traction that is a momentum that you can really feel and that is a hell yes yeah that is a for sure for sure for sure this is what i'm going to do and nobody can talk me out of this mm -hmm. that is decisiveness and oh isn't decisiveness and clarity they're the same thing aren't they don't you just appreciate so much being in that place of clarity there is not anything more uncomfortable than that oh, i could go this way or 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 this way and that's what your human mind will give you because you've collected all those facts you have the ability to make anything seem all right but the receptive mode is a whole other thing so now we want to talk about path of least resistance so Here's our statement. Your inner being knows where you are in terms of your physical vibrational state of being in relationship with what's in your vortex. Your inner being knows that. And your inner being knows how to get you from where you are to where you want to be. Knows all of the logical ways to inspire that. All of the things to feed to you that if you're in the receptive mode and follow will get you not just to where you want to be, but joyfully along the way to where you want to be. And what your inner being is considering as your inner being is offering you impulses is the resistance that is on your path that you've put there. But your inner being is not concerned that you've put resistance on your path because your inner being knows what all the resistance is and where it is and how to guide you around it. That's why the receptive mode matters. Your inner being isn't trying to just clear the path so that you can just go. Your inner being wants the path to be interesting to you. Your inner being wants it to be the adventure that you want it to be. So when you get into the receptive mode and the idea of sleeping in is a really what I want to do and you do it, then there's a benefit of that. If you get an impulse and you can feel it so strongly that no one could talk you out of it to get in your car and go somewhere or get on your phone and call someone or any of the behaviors or actions or even thoughts that come to you when they feel strong to you and you won't know which ones feel strong and which ones don't feel strong until you've felt some strong ones and you felt some not strong ones and you won't really know whether so you're really in the receptive mode until you've seen some of the strong ones and how they pay off and you've seen some out of the not strong ones and how they pay off in other words what we're really asking you to do and you have helped us to say this in a first time way that we've never said it before we want you to really understand whether you're operating out of your conscious mind or whether you're operating out of your receptive mode mind and there is a huge difference in which one you're doing and every master of anything that you've ever known knows how to get into that zone any master that has ever really accomplished anything in a very grand way has figured that out and some of them they stumbled upon it and they were not able to repeat it some of them they stumbled upon it and they figured out how to be there more of the time you have the opportunity to become masters of that you see and so we would not be asking the question why do i have indecision we would be making the statement indecision doesn't fly with me indecision means not receptive mode and it doesn't matter why i'm in the not receptive mode i'm not in the receptive mode how can i get in the receptive mode and no more conversation about the other is of any value in comparison yeah it was almost amusing to watch how the mind could get fully lined up with one and then the other one and, and to try to step back and just find peace That's and see what comes. That's because there's value everywhere. Yeah. You can make positive aspects of anything. Yeah. And if you've been listening to us for a while, we've been guiding you to do that. We've uh -huh. been guiding you to yeah. utilize your conscious mind in a positive way. Yeah. But we are in this conversation about mastery now. Yeah. We're in a conversation about understanding the difference between guiding your conscious mind and accepting the results of that conscious mind and guiding your conscious mind into alignment with that super mind, with who you really are, with the inspiration that you're reaching for, you see. Yeah. There are people who write songs from their head and there are people who write songs from their alignment. And the difference in those songs is a big difference, isn't it? It's a big difference when you're in the receptive mode and when you're just rhyming things up. It's a big difference because in your vortex is everything that matters to you. All the upliftment that you wish to offer to the planet, all of the value that you came in knowing, all of the thrill of alignment and how that feels, the thrill of the process. It's not just the results of the thoughts. It's the moment of the thought. It's the feel of the thought. And you will never experience anything more delicious than receiving the thoughts of your broader perspective. You yeah. Uh, another question is on desire so if you've said before that once you have a desire once you launch it you cannot 
let go. It cannot go away. Now let's talk about that more fully. Yeah. You've launched it incrementally and it's been gathering by law of attraction. That's worth talking about now, since we just told you that earlier, you'll hear this in a new way. So you've been putting the pieces of your desire into your vortex and your inner being stands there. And what did we just say about the comparative attraction power of your inner being versus you? So can you feel the power of what's going on in your vortex? Can you just imagine what's going on in your vortex? Can you feel the wonder and the empire and the massiveness and the bigness and the goodness and the value of what's in your vortex, what your inner being has stood there and attracted to that on your behalf because you are it and it is you. Can you feel how big that is? And so when you talk about desire, we want to say that's that desire. That's that desire. That desire is there. It's bigger than you know. Now, when you chill, when you tune in, when you meditate, when you don't do that thing you do that keeps you from being in the receptive mode, how's that? And you don't do that thing that doesn't work. And you are in alignment with that. Now, your inner being is going to incrementally feed to you ideas to get you from where you are to where you want to be. And that is the deliciousness of life. That's the in the flow. That's the in the zone. That's the hands in the clay of creation. That's the joy of life. That's the fulfilling the purpose of life. That's the being who you are. That's the clarity and the creativity flowing. That's so satisfying. Don't you like the word satisfying? That's so satisfying. It's so satisfying to be in that mode, in that receptive mode of allowing all of the things that you've created. We've been talking to you about step one, step two, step three for quite a long time, haven't we? And now you're getting it in a whole new way because step one and two have happened and now you're doing step three. Now you're in the receptive mode and now the thoughts are flowing. So given that that desire continues to just beam a signal and it does not go away, people find ways of disconnecting from their desire, disconnecting consciously. What is that? Is it a dissociation or and what's the quickest way out of that? Right. So here again, another question that we're going to give you a really quick answer yeah. to that you're really going to like. Yeah. What was your question? <laughs> What is the mechanism people use to disconnect from that because it cannot go away? So what are they doing and how do you get back? Here's the thing that you keep doing that we want you to stop doing. Here's what we really want you to hear. It isn't what they're doing that we want to talk about. It's what they're not doing. Oh, yeah. They're not getting into the receptive mode. In other words, that's the only way to explain it. Like who the, cares how they're doing it? Doesn't it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter why they're justifying or why they're defending. None of that makes any difference. It could go dozens and dozens and dozens of different ways. Ask the question again, because you're speaking it very clearly yeah. as a spokesman of humanity and certainly talking. So what's the question? What is it that you're the asking? The desire does not go away. The desire is a constant. But many people find ways of disassociating and disconnecting. Okay, so from stop that sentence really right matter. there. Many people find, including me sometimes, find ways of distancing. Find things that aren't alignment. Yeah. And every time they find them, they don't feel as good as alignment. In other words, this is what the yeah. mastery is. It's sort of by trial and error. You do that and you get those results and you do that and you get those results and you do that and you get those results. You do that and you get those results. You do that and you get those results. And after a while you say, oh, this is what I really prefer. Not just because I get better results, but because it's way more fun along the way. Mm -hmm. So let's get to the heart of your question. What was the question again? <laughs> this matters a lot. Yeah. That, um, so the desire is a constant. So the question is, what is it? I think you've sort of answered that you don't worry about what it is that we do, but there is something we do to dissociate or disconnect from desire because we don't like the pain of the disconnect. Maybe, but that's a lot of blah, 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 blah. You don't justify well, you... that. Don't defend that and don't support that because I'm not saying it's right. I just say, what's the quickest way out of that pattern? What is the most Stop direct doing path? It. Care about how you feel. Stop doing it. <laughs> it sounds very simple. It does. And it is. It is. But you got to the heart of it. The answer is care about how you feel. Yeah. And once you have tasted alignment and clarity, then anything less than that just won't do. The answer to your question is law of attraction. Yeah. But another answer to the question is, I must not care enough about that feeling of clarity and that feeling of alignment if I'm willing to go another route. And another answer to the question is, most everybody else is doing that, so it seems reasonable. It seems reasonable to someone who hasn't experienced the mastery, in other words, if you've never known what the receptive mode feels like, then you might be willing to tolerate the reasonable mind mode. 
but once you've tasted what alignment and clarity feels like and what streaming non-physical consciousness feels like and about really being fully who you are feels like then anything less than that is just not enough